Hi there, and thanks for stopping by my channel. A square pillow isn't square, the place where you will learn all things related to home deck sewing. Today's video is a tutorial on cord locks, also known as tension locks, and they're used to lift and lock Roman, Austrian, and other types of shades. I've had several of my subscribers and viewers ask me about these, and there's actually things about these little cord locks that you don't even know that you don't know. So quick video, everything you need to know to help you successfully choose and install your cord lock. These cord locks come in different sizes and shapes. Uh, so how do you know which one is the right one for your project? The first thing you're gonna notice is that they come with different numbers of wires on the bottom. The wires divide the bottom of the cord to help you keep your cord separated and they're sold by how many wires or slots they have, as well as what size cord they're designed to use. For example, here's one from Rowley Company, a great supplier of workroom products. The one they carry has four wires and five slots, and it specifies that it can accommodate 10 cords maximum. That means that you can put two to three cords in each slot and the cord lock will function correctly. The key is also that they specify a specific size of lift cord. Here's one for sale on Amazon that also has four wires and five slots, but it specifies it only holds up to five cords. It also states specifically that it's designed to use 1.8 millimeter lift cord. So it's important to make sure you understand which tension lock you're buying and if it's gonna work properly for your shade and your number of cords. You might say, why does it matter how big the lift cord is anyway? Will any lift cord work? No, and here's why. When you look inside your roller, there's gonna be a gap on either side of the roller. It's clearance so that it doesn't hit the plastic casing. If your lift cord is too small, then it's going to get caught on the side of the roller instead of staying between the rollers like it's supposed to. And that actually is the case in the one that I'm using on my demo. I actually strung this shade originally um, just as a sample to wrap around a cord cleat. I didn't intend to put a tension lock on it, so I used my thinnest lift cord. But after I strung this little demo shade with a tension lock, I noticed that the cord kept getting caught in the side of the lock, and it is because my lift cord is too small for this lock. All right, the next thing you might not know about these cord locks is that there is an inside and an outside. If you'll notice, this wire is fed through the housing, and on one end, it looks like the top of a staple. On the other end, where the wires poke through, it looks like the pointy ends of a staple. Whether you put your cord lock on the right side of your mounting board or the left side of your mounting board, the staple top side, the more finished looking side, should always face the outside of your shade. This will ensure that your tension lock and release work correctly and also it'll look neater if someone sees the side of your uh, tension lock from the room. Okay, let's talk about mounting the little tension lock and stringing it on your shade. Some people say to attach the cord lock first and then, tr and then string it. I find that a much more difficult way to do it and here's why. If you hold the cord lock upside down, as you see here, Gravity is going to make these two rollers roll up against each other and there's no gap to run your cord through. If you were to take your tension lock and hold it above your head, give it a little shake, those rollers are going to separate and give you a nice big gap to put your cord through. If your lock is already attached to your board, the board gets in the way of your hand getting in to feed it from the top and I just find it's much easier to thread my tension lock completely um, and then attach it to the board. Right. These cord locks have openings on both ends. That's so that you can take strings from either direction and feed them in from the right or from the left. People often think you have to put the cord lock on the very, very outside of the shade, but I never do that because it always interferes where 
uh, with where my last screw eye is. So I usually set it in a little bit on the board like this, and I will then be able to string it from both directions. As I showed you in the last picture, these uh, these rollers have to separate. So give them a shake, make sure that they're separated, and that makes it really easy to feed the strings through. So let me get the end of this one. It's gotta come in from this way. The way that you string these shades is you hold your cord lock the way that it's gonna be on your board. This string is gonna come in from the left. If your rollers are released, you should be able to go right in through the side and down through the rollers and you can see that it fed right through there and it went in between these two wire separators. Then you'll just bring your strings one at a time from the other side and you'll feed it down through the rollers. So these wires are separators so that your cords have space between them so I'm just going to make sure this cord comes down in a different spot. And then you'll do, in my case, I have three cords. So I'm going to put the last one in through the top. And see, there it is. If it's not going through where you want it to go, you can use a tweezer and grab it and put it on the side of the divider that you want. So there is my strung cord lock. Now that it's like that, it's this is at this point, I'm going to secure it to the board and that's all there is to it. A couple more little tips to mention. Uh, some people ask if you can actually use the cord lock itself as a screw eye. I recommend that you do not. I always make sure there's room for a screw eye um, before the thread actually goes through the lock. Um, I think it just works better when it comes through horizontally instead of from underneath. And the other thing to make sure of is that your strings are not twisted together or tangled as they are fed into the lock and as they come out of the lock. You want them to be nice and even and separated to ensure a good smooth operation. Hope you found this video helpful. If you did and you like the other content on my channel, please hit that subscribe button and happy sewing.